Hi guys, um, I'm going to talk today about the CNC machine I built. Um, thinking back, it would have been a good idea to have actually filmed the whole building process, but that was not what was going through my mind at the time, so I never did it. But I'm going to do a talk through and show you some bits and pieces of the CNC and how I went about building it. So. The first thing that I did when, when it came to building a CNC is, and I've got no experience of CNC's at all. I've never operated one before. I don't even have a friend or someone that's got a CNC, so I was unable to actually go and view CNC's or anything for the sake of seeing how to build one. So um, online there is plenty of information there and videos out of people of the CNC, so a lot of my time is just doing some research and watching some YouTube videos and stuff of guys with their CNC's and so on. So, when it came to building this one, first thing that was important to me was the size of the workspace I've got here. So, a lot of these CNC's that you can buy as kits and so on, they don't they don't do it for me. They're either too small or too flimsy or they just don't, don't meet my specifications of what I need. So, the workspace I needed, the minimum one work that I needed for, for the kind of work I would do, would be 600 wide and 1 meter long. Um, in the case of this CNC, we've gone a little bit more because obviously the tip does not run right to the end because of the way it, it works. So, this is now 700 long and the length of the CNC is actually one and a half meters. And the one and a half meters was purely because I had enough uh, rails and so on to, to make it one and a half and it wouldn't do anything to the actual strength of the CNC. So um, once I decided the actual size of the CNC that I had wanted, I went ahead and ordered all the aluminium extrusions and so on for running everything on according to the size I went on to and then the first thing I did was build the butts so I used uh, this, this, this is birch ply as they call it it's extremely extremely rigid um, very high quality plywood this um, I mean they even use it in aircraft building and so on so it's extremely high quality this um, so this is 18 mil thick the ply so basically what I did is I cut obviously the bottom surface and then the two end pieces right so now you can see a bit closer this is the end piece I'm referring to and the base so the base was cut correct size, the two end strips which run all the way along the ends on both sides that I did next. So then the next process I went ahead was to drill all the little holes. This is for my fixing all my little attachments onto the CNC. So at the bottom of these, let me show you what I got. <clears throat> okay. So all these holes like I mentioned, they are the actual fixing points for articles. So I, I just went on my own estimate of what, what I thought was good. So these are all uh, 100 mils apart, every single one of them. And at the back of this board now, I've mounted these little goodies. This is nothing more than a, I don't actually know what you call them. It's a insert. It's got a thread in there for M5 thread. And basically from the back of the board, you'll see when I flip it, they just get knocked in there. It, it, it's extremely simple. You just knock them in there and for hammer and then that's it. So now that this was complete, the side pieces were attached the actual plywood side, side pieces. After I'd attached the plywood side pieces, then I started here with the actual railings. So these railings are 
one and a half meters long. Um, you buy that from, there, there, there's so many online stores and so on that sell these bits and pieces for CNC, so there's no shortage of that. So, as you'll see from the inside, there's, there's actual countersink stainless steel nuts. I've got a couple of them along the way. Another one over there. There's another one and so on. So, basically that nut goes through the piece of wood into that little thing there where there's a little flat nut that goes in there. There's actually a little bit of play. So if I loosen these nuts on the side, this rail can actually move up and down. Now I'm only talking about, about by about two mils, one mil up and one mil down. So it gives you a little bit of movement for later on for when you want to calibrate and set everything correctly. So next thing I did was from the online store, we ordered the little wheel sets. Um, this is not something I would recommend trying to, to make yourself in that, including the metal plate that comes at the back there. You, you're looking for a lot of drama to try and make that yourself. So you buy these plates like this from the online stores um, and they've got multiple holes in that for various locations. Everything comes in, it's so perfect, so why must you struggle? The little wheels, they've got ball bearings in them. You'll see at the back there, there's actually a hex nut there, which is an off-center hex nut. So if I turn this hex nut that you see over here, clockwise or counterclockwise, it actually moves the wheel in or out. So that way you can make sure you've got no backlash. Um, I basically set the wheel tight enough that, that even if I try to rotate it like this, it, you can, but it, it, it's quite firm. You obviously don't want to make it too tight. The wheel is a type of, I forgot what it's called, but let's call it a type of very special, a hard nylon. So if you make it too tight, it could actually eventually make an indentation if it just stood in one place. So. Right, so yes, so that all operates very smoothly. Um, the next thing we did was the stepper motors. Obviously there's four, one for your, I forget what planes they are, I think there's a Z. And then there's another one here, which is for a Y. And then on the side, I've got two of them, one for each side. Um, that's for your other axis. So, the two ones on the side I got, once again, I had no experience of this stuff, so I wasn't really sure which is the correct ones to get. So I got, uh, I did some research and so on, but I basically just settled at the end of the day for one. I stand in a correction, I think this thing puts out one point, puts out five kilograms torque, or five kilograms, five, five newton meters torque, or something like that. And because there's one on each side and they're both moving the boom forward and backwards, um, it gives it ample power. This one, because there's only one that moves this axis across, this one's basically double in size. So this one outputs to 8 kilograms, uh, sorry, correction, 10 kilograms of torque. And the top one I also got is a big one, or thinking back, it's actually probably overkill, yeah? And this one you can see actually it's plain and simple it drives a, a thread screw and it's got a little thread there as as i turn it you can straight away see how it moves up and down the other three axes i will show you just now they run with belts to to run it forwards and backwards so let me show you what the belt looks like all right so here's a little off cut of the belt i've got this is a six millimeter wide belt and you can see the teeth on there that, and there's a pulley that runs up and down on the belt plain and simple this pulley just fits, fixes straight onto the stepper motor it's got two little lock screws on the side so that's quite simple um, the belt itself um, it's quite high quality. Once again, I can't remember. It's not rubber. You do get rubber versions, but this, I think, was a type of nylon one. And I'm not sure if you can actually see it. Let's see if we can actually focus in on it. 
and the ends there. You can slightly see it. They've got little steel steel wires running through the belt. So the chance of stretch on here is very little. I know they say that these belts do stretch. Um, given it probably would, especially over a very long distance. <clear throat> but the CNC I built was also never ever intended for, for high, high precision um, parts, as in, in, as in metal parts. I built the CNC firstly to, to operate wood, um, machine wood, and secondly, um, obviously soft plastics, uh, perspex and so on, and with the possibility of the right tips, I haven't tried it yet, um, I think I'll be able to machine aluminium as well, which is more than I'll ever do. So you'll see actually a lot of the other bits I did in the CNC, it's all wood. Um, you can buy these these bits and pieces from online stores as well, uh, in, in, in steel, including this, the actual spindle holding brackets in steel, but I work of wood, so I decided to try the challenge of making it all out of wood. Um, and like I said, this plywood's extremely rigid. It's probably more rigid than a, a three or four mil or, or even five mil piece of steel would be. Um, and it's also not, not a very high, tall piece, so that, that works quite fine. Now down to the spindle itself. You'll see uh, I've used a, a Makita hand router. So my decision for this at the end of the day was I think it's more universal than, than the actual spindle motors you get. Me working with wood all day long, um, I've got some other routers, but this is a nice, as you can see, as compared with my hand side, it's not very big. It's a very nice hand router, which will actually come handy in other things too. So I might take it off here and use it for other things. So for that reason, I got this one. Um, this is the one with the variable speed over here. It runs from 10,000 RPM all the way to 30,000 RPM. And it's got a soft start on and off. So the, the spindle doesn't at all operate via the software. I have to manually switch it on and off. Although there is an option on the software how I can operate it, which at the later stage I will probably connect it up. So that, that's the bit for the spindle. So let's... The next thing, the wires, I still have to get around to them. They're just at the moment hanging. They haven't been a problem in the process at all, including the cable that runs on the side. Once again, you get very nice online at the online stores, chains that you can run the cables in and out of. I haven't done that yet. So I probably will do it, especially for this specific control over here. The side ones I'm not too worried about because those cables just run out the way anyway. So that's not a problem. Now let me show you the side of the electronics. So you can see them hiding out underneath here. I will now flip up the board so that you can see the bottom. Right now we're looking at the bottom. So first of all you can see all the little, little nut inserts that I've put in there for the attachment points. And at the end here you can see the controller boards. So, it might look a little bit complicated, and I'm not very clued up to the actual programming side of these things. That's my brother's speciality, and he did it all for me. So, first of all, you'll see four of these. One on this side, two on this, sorry, three on this side. Though those are the actual stepper motor controllers. Next, you'll see this. Um, that's just a power supply, a 12 volt, uh, about a 7 amp, I think, output power supply we've put there. Then there is this little circuit. This is a Arduino board that my brother had made. The Arduino board's actually underneath there. Um, that's just to, to, to run the actual CNC program. And then we've got over here, I think he called this, this is a Raspberry. So. The nice thing about the Raspberry is it runs um, Wi-Fi. Um, it's, it's basically essentially a little mini computer, probably not that different for, from your Android boxes and all that sort of stuff, just got quite a lot more processing power. So 
it's got Wi-Fi like I mentioned on it so when, when it comes to running this thing you bring your laptop here or your computer and connect it to your via Wi-Fi so there's no need for flash drives or transferring of programs or anything come here for your laptop with Wi-Fi you, you send the the code across to you um, and once it's sent across to you it's done you can take your laptop away and this will run the program then as I discussed about the attachment points here so I've got a box full of bolts I will get various sizes it's an M5 like I said they just go in there because of the thread they can go so you can straight away fix your attachment straight on there but once again I've made an assortment of blocks and bits and pieces so the way I've made these blocks to work, you'll see they've got holes in them. So the idea is basically these holes correspond to those holes over there. So basically I can attach that and attach that to the spots like that. Then you will see these ones are made. This is nothing more than a little cam lever. So once again cam lever, I can take that, I can mount this over here, I can take my workpiece, let's say this is my workpiece, I want a machine, I can put it on there by turning the cam, in this case it's not going to work, right, so this one will work, let's call this my workpiece now, so I'm going to machine it. By turning this piece here, the cam actually squeezes this in, so now this can't move. Obviously it can to some degree. I can always take a second plank if I want to and fix it onto the next axis over this. So now that you've got your T-piece, so this can't move at all anymore. So that, that was the idea for all these little bits and pieces. Right, so now I'm just doing a little demonstration. This is a piece um, I recorded just in a time lapse. Um, it's just basically a little simple design. I did it for a little switch control panel. Um, so, yes, actually, in all honesty, the most difficult part about the whole, the most challenging part about the whole CNC was actually learning how to operate 3D CAD. Um, I'm busy using uh, FreeCAD, um, it's quite a good program. Um, I've still got a lot to learn about it, um, but I'm getting the hang of it for simple designs and that. Obviously, I won't immediately try something too complicated. So I basically just <clears throat> did the design in two steps. I designed the front section, as you see what it's busy cutting out at the moment. And now you'll see me, this is uh, cutting out the back section. The little sections where you see it pausing, um, that's just me changing the bits as I machine through it. And there we go, we've got the final product. This is as it came out the machine now, so still a little bit rough with um, unfinished edges. Um, I did sand those edges down. I didn't clean, I didn't sand anything down, I just took off the rough edges and that's how it looks with the switches and the LCD in it.